Good afternoon. Today is another video which is I find very, very important to Western Australians and actually to all Australians and everybody in this country, which is the Commonwealth of Australia, which is the people. We have a constitution of each state and we have a Com Commonwealth Constitution Act, 1900 UK, and we have a Commonwealth Constitution. I've been told Captain Cook misled and deceived the Queen in relation to white settlers being around when he turned up. Well, that's not a fraud. That's just him being pedantic about his own ability to survive. It's not a fraud. didn't create a fraudulent constitution. I've, I've looked up. I can't even find out where these white settlers were, and I'm not really interested because it doesn't create a fraud at all. It doesn't. And you can't even put that down to fraud. Fraud is an intention to deceive. You've got no evidence to show he intended to deceive. There are other issues which are on the captain's log in captain from the ship that Captain Cook was on. I'm not going to bring it up because I'm not going to cause dissension about what it was that was said there. And of course, Wyatt Wharton and Mike Holt and the rest of his mob are not going to bring it up. You should bring the lot up or, quite frankly, shut up. Because you're putting forward this, talking about God, trying to show that you're a godly person. That's fine. If you are, I thank you. Good on you. But for the rest of the stuff, I don't want to know about it. Now, in relation to... Western Australia, and several issues. First, I'll deal with this so-called lockdown. And it comes up and with a document produced off the state government's website, which is only a parliament, and you idiots have admitted that on your own website. But why are all these planes flying out of Australia international flights. If this COVID-19 is so bad, why are they flying out? Are they? Yes. Dozens of people have seen them flying out a different flight, flight path. Why? To conceal it? Of course it is. Why are domestic flights coming in and out? Why are you doing that? What are you trying to hide? What about the fact that your little gentleman who was in security I tried to figure how he got around. Then I discovered from some people who know of him that he was an Uber driver as well. So he was security. He was an Uber driver. And a student. And a student at the university. A foreign student. McGowan, you've been slipping in foreign students and lying to the public. Concealing it is lying. Why are you doing that? Why would you bring in foreign students knowing this so-called COVID is around? As I said yesterday, no one's ever proved that there is an actual COVID virus. If they have, produce the documents. Don't tell me I'm a liar. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Don't tell me I'm stupid like some of you dumb, thick trolls are. I asked you to produce the documents. I'll change what I said. Then produce the evidence how... A virus gets out of the mucus around the cell, scientific fact out of your books, and then mutates into a disease caused by germs. And then it decided to mutate again into South Africa, and then it miraculously turned up here with all the help from the idiots in political parties who brought all these people home knowing that it is, well, Claiming you know that it is a mutated disease. Why would you do that? And now we find out, look at that, McGowan, you're bringing in foreign students without telling anybody here and lying about it. And now you've locked down everything and trying to claim that you have some authority to force people to wear masks. You can't force anyone to do anything. The people are sovereign and supreme. 
That's why I put out that document so people could sign it, which shows they are sovereign and supreme. They are not gender neutral persons. They're not legal fictions. They are sovereign and supreme. They are the Commonwealth. They are the authority. You are here to serve us. So shut your mouth. And as for those idiot cops going around, your employees of your company, going around telling everybody if they don't put on a mask, they get fined 50000 or 100000 or all the rest of your nonsense. It's a lie. It can't be made a law. You've never sat as a lawful parliament. And I have the evidence in front of me, and I'm going to put it to people so they'll know what a lying, thieving, little maggot you are, along with all the other lying, thieving maggots, because that's all you are, the lot of you. You are still lying to us. Now, I'll read this, because this is off your website. End of the 40th Parliament, which you've been claiming is a government. His Excellency, Excellency the Governor, <laughs> Fat Beasley, he's not the Governor. And I'll come to that in a minute with the evidence. His Excellency the Governor has dissolved the Legislative Assembly on and from the 29th of January 2021 with the result that the 40th Parliament has come to an end. Dissolution of the Assembly terminates all Assembly committees and all joint committees of the Parliament. Any Legislative Council committee without a capacity to meet to transact business after the Houses were prorogued on the 7th of December 2020 cannot meet to conduct any formal business, including the taking of evidence. The general election will be held on Saturday the 13th of March 2021 and the 41st Parliament will first meet on a subsequent date appointed by the Governor. COVID-19, closure of Parliament, all that nonsense. Don't want to know about that. It's just nonsense until you prove COVID-19 exists. Now, this is the state constitution. It is a letters patent. You understand what that means? It means under 6.1.9, the statute of monopolies, only the monarch can change or remove a letters patent. And she didn't. She did not. And to add to that, King George V in February 1920 reinstated all of Queen Victoria's letters patents. This one, 100% complete without the 32 sections missing that you claim are missing in your garbage constitutions, you call it. Now, you have a problem. In 2008, Queen Elizabeth II upheld all of her great-grandmother's letters patents, including this one, and the Commonwealth Constitution Act 1900 U UK. These two documents, State Constitution, Commonwealth Constitution, both letters patents can't be touched, regardless of what you think. Cannot. They can, this continues subject to this. Now this says, when the governor, which we haven't got, and I re the reason I keep saying that, because we haven't, we got a fat liar, the governor, when he prorogues the parliament, he wipes out or takes away both houses of the parliament. So your little letter is a lie. You don't get to change that. The constitution states that. Commonwealth constitution states the same about the federal. So if the state didn't, it would have to comply with the federal, which overrides the state constitution. Anyway, so you're wrong. So... You prorogued the parliaments. <laughs> it wasn't even established. Because to be established, it'd have to be established under the Constitution. And every single one of you would have to be British subjects, but you're not. To be British subjects, you would have to be part of the Commonwealth, and you're not. You're part of your companies, the political parties. And you are citizens of your political parties. Don't lie because all your documents show that. Now, what this is, a notice of Oorindo issued to Beasley by electronic transfer today and it will be sent a hard copy later. What is this document? Well, I'm going to read it because people need to understand it. This proves that Beasley is not the governor of Western Australia. 
He's not, nor can he be. He is a traitor. And if he signed off on any so-called act, statutes, rules, regulations or otherwise, then they'll avoid. See, we haven't had a lawful governor since January 1960. That's a fact. You are lying every time you peanuts open your mouth. Now, this is from Rudd Cullerton and others, the Great Australian Party, PO Box 8242 South Perth, Western Australia, 6151. Kim Beasley, DBA, Governor of Western Australia. Government House, St George's Terrace, Perth, Western Australia, 6000. By email. Dear Mr Beasley, notice of quo warranto writ of election for Western Australia. The Great Australian Party and its founder, Rod Cullison, Commonwealth Public Officer, being a CPO, and a former Federal Senator for Western Australia, being a subject sworn of the Queen. And it an Australian national pursuant to section, uh, section 34 of the Australian Commonwealth Constitution Act, 1900 UK and our Constitution, living in the state of Western Australia, has raised concern on fidelity in the upcoming election in Western Australia, 13th of March 2021. Section 34, you have to be a subject of the Queen, of the Crown, of the British Empire. And you idiots aren't. You aren't. You are traitors from the political parties. This inquiry concerns the authority in which the election writ may be issued, taken to have previously been made under the Queen of Australia, not our lawful monarch. By review of the Gazette for your appointment as Governor of Western Australia, published May the 2nd, 2018, in the State Gazette for Assumption of the Office at the third clause, assumption of office as go of governor. And the Queen of Australia, no such person, no such appointment. On the 1st of May 2018, the Honourable King Christian Beasley, well, Kim may be Christian, you're not, Beasley, A, took the oath of allegiance and the oath of office as required under letters patent relating to the office of governor for the state of Western Australia, dated 14th of February 1986, clause uh, that's 10, 15, 17, and the schedule. Elizabeth R., Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, Queen of Australia, and her other realms and territories, has the Commonwealth, for which reference letters patent is an instruction of the Crown. I've actually got the letters patent here. And the oath is the same oath contained in our Constitution. So you weren't sworn in, Beasley. As I said, you're a lying fat fool. Only a fool would take up an office knowing full well that your actions are blatant treason. But let's keep going. Dated the 14th of February 1986. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and of our other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith. That's her title. Look at that. It's actually on here. So Rod did a good job putting it here. Grounds for inquiry. In accord with the law at, as the federal and state party leader of a current registered political party known as the Great Australian Party Gap, I require in support of the president and its members, public, and as a matter of law and housekeeping, seeking true representation in the upcoming election for the Parliament of Western Australia to be issued February the 3rd, 2021, by way of a writ. I require, require verification that this writ is to be an exclusive exercise of the Crown. There is no law that may be identified or relied on, no lawfully acknowledged the title Office Queen of Australia. There is none. So where are you going to get this lawful Crown officer? The two reports of the Constitutional Commission published 1988 identifies the legal errors for the office of Queen of Australia, for which you had participated as a member of the Commission prior to publication. So you know what's going on, Beasley. It's all here. The evidence needed to show that you're nothing but a filthy lying traitor. The Commission of Kim Beasley assuming office of the Governor of Western Australia, made under the name of Queen of Australia, is contrary to the laws of the Commonwealth 
and title of the Queen as the Sovereign for the Commonwealth of Australia, consistent and in compliance with all letters patent for the state of Western Australia. Back to the Constitution, letters patent. You were not elected according to this. You don't exist. What sort of a moron would you be to get sworn in as an, under the Queen of Australia knowing that you have no authority? You're an idiot. A total clown. Then, what is not in evidence is presumed to be non-existent. The maxim applies where a party seeks to rely upon any deeds or writings which are not produced in court and the loss of which is not accounted for or supplied in a manner which the law prescribes. For in this case they should be treated as against such party, as if non-existent. That which does not appear will not be presumed to exist. Cases are versus Bishop of Chester, 1786, ITR 396-404. R versus Walcott overseas, 1862, 2B and S, 555, 560, C, Broom, 99, unless they can be proved by secondary evidence, you got none. None. I ask that authority be affirmatively shown so that any nominated candidate for the Great Australian Party gap be fully satisfied and to be shown at law to overcome any inconsistency or inconsistencies prior to consent in order to give true constitutional representation for the people of WA and not be made subject to any offence including but not limited to Section 3, Treason Felony Act 1948. You'll find that reference at Hawkesbury's Laws of England, Chapter 2, at 248 or 346, I think. It's a treason felony what you're doing. Don't you understand that? Is in force? Yes. Our Constitution says so. All nominations for GAP candidates will be taken to be accepted on an express condition until shown otherwise. Upon address of the quo warranto, all GAP candidates will act in good faith under their constitutional safeguard guarantee found at section. 2, subsection 3, Constitution Act, 1889 WA, until satisfied in full. This is the Commonwealth Con uh, State Constitution Act, 1889 WA, put in place with a letters patent on the 29th of October 1900 by Queen Victoria. What that means is I'm not associated with the gap. I can't change that. That's my word. I stick to it. And for the reasons I previously stated. However... I'm fully behind this quo warranto because it's made in accordance with the law. In other words, basically, you must prove who you are. Then, then you've got a problem because you've sworn in members of parliament when you had no authority to do so. So every single thing done by your little mate and buddy, you know, the thing four foot high, not out, named Traitor McGowan, that little flea, Everything that you pass or sign that he put up, it's a fraud. It's a lie. It's blatant treason. Now, people asking to explain about this. In people want to know what this document is. This document is a state, an, uh, an oath taken by you to uphold the authority of the crown, the queen, our monarch. It then takes you out of the legal fiction and put you in common law under our constitution. It states you are a sovereign subject. It states you are a man or a woman or whatever else you want to declare yourself as. That's your right, whether people like it or not. Now, the whole idea of this is you are coming out from their corporate nonsense. You are no longer a member of their corporate nonsense. The trolls will say, ah, oh, you're wrong, it's a lie. No, you're in nuts cases. Get the copy of the document, read it, you'll understand it if you can get your pea brains around it. Now, this document can be used then to hand to a police officer and demand he shows where he swore an oath to the Crown. Because without that oath, he doesn't exist. He does not exist. So the threats of 
prosecution, $50,000 and all the rest. Absolute nonsense. Now, the Parliament was prorogued. It became effective on the 29th of January. Who is employed by the, the Parliament claiming to be a government? The police, the courts, the magistrates, <laughs> even the idiots called councils. All of this. And Kim Beasley. Not one of you has any authority unless you are officers of the Crown. Do you understand? No exercise authority inside the Commonwealth of Australia can happen except under the Crown. HCA 44 of 2006, Kirby made that very, very clear. It also stated not only permanent judges, which is judges that are permanently there in our courts, but temporary judges must swear the oath of allegiance before taking their oath of office. The oath contained here. You must, if you're a judge. Otherwise, simply, you are not a judge. You are not a magistrate. This is not a state created or the state, created under Section 8 of the Acts Amendment Repeals Court and Legal Practice Act. This is a state created under 106, which is our Constitution continuance, subject to our con Commonwealth Constitution, 107, 108 and 109. Those laws that were enforced before Federation continue subject to our Constitution. Read Section 51, Subsection 38, of the annotated constitution, you'll find there was only seven legislative areas, and all seven are contained in section 51 of the constitution, pursuant to clause 7 of the constitution. Not only didn't you have any authority, there were no laws at Federation in existence by the colonies, because the colonies didn't exist. They ceased to exist on the proclamation of the Constitution on the 9th of July 1900. That's not my words, that is the Constitution, the interpretation by the people who wrote it. It is a fact. Go read Clause 7, apply it, and then look at Section 51. Where do you have authority over land? Where do you have authority over people? Where do you get the authority to call yourself sovereign and supreme? You didn't. The Constitution says you're not sovereign. The Constitution says you're not supreme. All you're doing is sitting there and lying. It's time for you to pull your heads out of your butts and stop lying to the people. You are nothing. No crown, no authority. You're nothing. So you slimy little weasel, go back to the eastern states and take the rest of your thick cronies with you and go teach your socialist garbage somewhere else. You don't like the way I talk to you? I'll give you a box of tissues. You like and get out the back and have a sook. You childish little maggots. You have no authority. And I'm warning every police officer and every single one of you, you will stand trial for treason if you uphold this lying little maggots instructions. Under the Health Act? Nonsense. Nonsense. He has put these so-called diseases here. He is creating a lie, a fraud. He is creating fear. And you people are backing him up. Beasley, I've just shown you Beasley was not lawfully elected. So how can he sign off and swear in politicians? He can't. So they were not lawfully elected. So all their rules, regulations that you are taking are lies. You didn't take a lawful oath of office, so therefore you have no authority. Get a copy of this. It's on my wife's Facebook page. Sign it and swear the oath to give yourselves authority. I'm talking about police officers. Go somebody, on there and get it. Somebody said, who can witness a document for the signing? Anybody. All it is is saying, I saw that person sign this document and sign it. You... <coughs> don't have to be a justice of the peace. You don't have to be a commissioner of declarations or anything else. You can sign up witnessing that person's signature. Why? Because you can. 
because you're all part of the Commonwealth of Australia. You are the authority. These maggots have to serve us. Make them or sack them. You get enough people, we can sack them. We can jail them. And that includes the police if they refuse to take the lawful oath. Take it or get out of our police force because you're not officer of the Crown. You have no authority. No, the Parliament can't pass laws taking away the Crown and everything else. If you believe that, you're a bigger moron than I thought you were. You must swear the oath of, under the Crown to put yourself under the Crown to give yourself authority. The Crown is God. The Crown is God. Our law is made pursuant to the Bible. Magna Carta, 1688, Bill of Rights, Act of Settlement, Habeas Corpus, King James Bible. That's all law in this country, the common law, brought in by the oath. The oath is to the reigning monarch, God's representative. You don't like that? Tough. You don't like what I say? Tough. You are not going to get your one world government. You are not going to get what you want. You are going to get a piece of rope around your neck and you're going to swing for your treason and treachery against the Australian people. Can you do that and be a Christian? Absolutely. Learn your Bible properly. Stop lying. Stop finding excuses not to do anything in the Bible. I can go through the Bible and I find a hundred ways why different ways things should happen because you pull something out of context. And stop teaching the book of Romans, chapter 13, 1 to 8, applies because it does not in this country. We, the people, are the commonwealth. We, the people, are the government. Wake up to that fact, realise your authority, and exercise it under the crown because mm. you have that right. And anybody who is there employed to serve us, which police are, peacekeeping officers, and there to lock up the parliament when it gets out of line, so, Mr. Police Commissioner, who's high up in the Baptist Church, use your authority correctly. Arrest the Parliament. I've got the evidence. You've got a quo warranto now, served on Kim Beasley. Get a copy, serve it, use it, and lock the Parliament up for treason, including Fat Beasley. Do it. That is your job. You don't like it. Get out of there. Stop collecting money for nothing. Thank you.